and I set myself a challenge to learn SQL in 24 hours. I talked about normalization, which is a concept that I've always struggled with. A view is a virtual table that acts like a table and looks like a table, but is not a real table. It's so close to being done for the day. <laughs> Welcome to the channel. I'm Amrita. I'm a developer advocate at Cockroach Labs and I set myself a challenge to learn SQL in 24 hours. I came across this book called Teach Yourself SQL in 24 Hours while scrolling through the New York Public Library catalog and it seemed very interesting so I requested it and now I have it. And this weekend is a long weekend so my plan is to study 12 hours today and 12 hours tomorrow and I know by the end of it, I'm not going to be a SQL expert, but I really hope to know more SQL than I do right now. And in this video, I'll share what I learned. Okay, I just finished the first hour of the book and I love that they had a straight up disclaimer saying this is going to be a boring chapter but to stick with it because the payoff is going to be worth it. And I'm really glad that I did stick with it uh, because it was a good refresher on the common terms and concepts of SQL. Uh, so they talked about uh, obviously what is a relational database and then they talked about SQL sessions, the six types of SQL commands which is data definition language, data manipulation language, data control language, data query language, uh, transaction control, and data administration. They also have quizzes at the end of the chapter, so it was a good way to make sure that I remember what I'm learning. And on to hour two. It's 11.06, hour two, time to switch out coffee for water and get started. What do you learn in this hour? A look at the underlying data of a table, an introduction to the basic data types. Just finished hour two. It was a pretty short chapter. Uh, it was an introduction to the data types. So we learned about uh, strings and numeric types and date and time and Boolean uh, data types. And they have a note saying every implementation of SQL has its own specific set of data types. So the implementation I'm using is CockroachDB. So I've spent some time going through the data types documentation for CockroachDB. Hour three, managing database objects. Just finished hour three. It covered database objects and schemas. So database objects are things like tables and views and indexes and sequences. And then database schema uh, is a collection of the database objects. And the chapter talked about tables as the primary storage object for data in a relational database. And the table consists of rows and columns. And I also learned about integrity constraints like the primary key constraints. So the primary key identifies one or more columns in a table that make a row of data unique. And then I learned about foreign key constraints. So a foreign key is a column in one table that references a primary key in another table. Now I am working or I'm trying to work on this exercise um, at the end of this chapter and I'm running into uh, some trouble uh, because let me show you. So this is the exercise and it is asking us to create the tables in the sample database that we will use throughout the book. But the problem is there is no schema uh, for the sample database and it tells us to go to the bonus exercises section uh, to get the DDL for the statements and I went to the, to the bonus exercise uh, section. Let me find it again. There is no data definition statements that I can see. I'm a little stuck here. Um, I'll update you when I find a solution. 20 minutes later. Okay, update. Uh, I did not find a solution uh, to the database problem. Uh, I tried a bunch of things, found a way to register the book on their website and I was hoping that would give me access to the sample database. That didn't happen. Like I got access to the sample database, but I realized it was for a different edition of the book than the one I have. So that kind of didn't work out. And then I kind of Googled around a bit some more and I came across this review on Amazon, which also talks about how difficult it is to uh, set up the database. And by this time, like I've already wasted like 20 minutes on this uh, issue. So I kind of thought of 
another way to achieve what they want me to do. So basically they want me to set up a sample database that I can use for the rest of the exercises in the book. And CockroachDB already has a sample database built into it called Mover. And not only that, our docs team has some really cool resources too. We have the SQL playground that loads up uh, a sample database for you to play with. We also have this really cool interactive tutorial that you can use to learn CockroachDB SQL. And since the whole point of the exercises in this book is to help me practice SQL, I can just use the CockroachDB resources. So yeah, um, that took way longer than I expected. And, uh, but I think we are back on track now, so that's good. And I'm hungry, so I'm gonna go get some lunch and I'll see you back for our Four. I'll see you back for hour four. Just finished chapter four. Uh, it talked about normalization, which is a concept that I've always struggled with. And so I appreciate them breaking it down for me in a way that was easier to understand. So normalization is the process of reducing the data redundancies within a database. So we start with the raw database, uh, which can have redundant data across multiple tables. And that is bad for data security, data integrity, takes up more disk space, and also can result in slower queries. So to reduce the redundancies, we normalize the data. And the degree to which the data is normalized is called a normal form. So usually people use up to three normal forms. So the first normal form, the second normal form, and the third normal form. The first normal form divides the base data into tables and assigns primary keys to most or all of the tables. So basically we divide a large table into smaller manageable tables. The second normal form is derived from the first normal form and it takes the data that is only partly dependent on the primary key and enters that data into another table. Third normal form is to remove data from a table that is not dependent on the primary key. Then the chapter talked about the benefits of normalization, which we have already talked about, but it also talked about the downsides of normalization, which is reduced database performance because a normalized data it takes up more CPU, more memory, and more I.O. Uh, so we need to be careful of the trade-off between uh, the benefits of normalization and uh, a potentially reduced database performance. So that was all about chapter four. Chapter five was all about data manipulation statements, uh, insert, update, delete. And I learned how to insert and update data in all columns and selected columns. Uh, of a row and how to insert null values and how to delete data from a table. Chapter 6 was all about transactions and transactions are groupings of SQL statements that are executed in a way that either all of them succeed or none of them succeed. And so they give you the flexibility of undoing changes if things go wrong. Uh, and the three SQL statements to control transactions are commit, rollback, and save point. And they had this helpful diagram. Where is my diagram? So when a transaction is being executed, the data is temporarily stored in a rollback area called a temporary buffer. And then if you issue a commit command, it will make the changes to the target table or uh, if you don't want to commit the changes, then you can roll back and then the changes are discarded. And the save point is a point in the transaction that you can roll back to just that point so that you don't have to discard the entire transaction. I'm only halfway through the day and I'm already pretty tired and sleepy. Uh, so I think I'm gonna go get some coffee. The coffee did help. Uh, but I'm still a little sleepy, so I'm gonna go get some fresh air on the terrace. It's a little chilly in New York today, uh, thanks to Hurricane Ida, but we'll see if we can sit outside. Uh, I finished chapter 7 through 9. Chapter 7 was all about 
the select statement so we talked about uh, the select statement being used to get data or query data from the database and you can get data from one column or multiple columns and the from clause is a required clause for any select statement and the where clause is used to put conditions and you have to be very careful about what conditions you put uh, because if you don't put the right constraints through the where clause then you can get um, then it can affect your database performance and uh, the order by clause is used to sort the data uh, in the specified order then chapter 8 and 9 were very quick reads they were all about operators uh, so we learned about the conjunctive operators and arithmetic operators and logical operators and uh, comparison operators. Then chapter 9 was about aggregate functions. So both of those chapters were very quick to read because most of the content was more of examples and then studying how to use those operators and functions. Uh, so yeah, I'm so close to being done for the day. 9.49 and we are done for day 1. It's the second day. It's 10.01. Let's get started. I didn't update you last night because I was very tired and not gonna lie, I kind of cheated a bit and just skimmed the last three chapters, but I did make a note for myself to revise the chapters later in the week. The chapters were about more functions like the date time functions and some other functions and it just got a lot of theory that I just had to like read through. So I just like skimmed through them. Right now I'm back. Uh, and I'm reading chapter 13, hour 13, and it's about joins, which is another very important topic. So what I learned in this chapter is that joins uh, allow us to get data from multiple normalized tables. And to join two tables, we use the select statement and the tables from which we want to get data are listed in the from clause and the condition for the joins are listed in the where clause. I learned that there are four types of joins, uh, inner joins, outer joins, Cartesian joins, and self joins. Inner joins join two tables that have a common column. Outer join returns all rows in one table even if the corresponding rows don't exist in the other table. You can have a left outer join, a right outer join, or a full outer join. Self join joins a table with itself but in that case you have to rename the table using an alias and then Cartesian joins are also called cross joins and they return all the rows in both the table. So it can return a large amount of unnecessary data. Things to consider when using joins is thinking about what columns you want to join on and what the performance implications are because more joins in a query means the database server has to do more work so it can result in slower queries and uh, incorrect joins can lead to incorrect data or like slower database performance. Hi! Uh, it's been a couple of hours since I last updated you. I finished reading chapters 14 and 15. Chapter 14 was all about uh, subqueries. Uh, so what I learned was subqueries are nested queries and you add a subquery in the where clause of a select statement and then the subquery is resolved first and the output of the subquery is used as a more restrictive condition for the where clause for the main query. Uh, so that was very interesting. And then chapter 15 was about compound queries uh, and it talked about how you can use multiple individual queries together as a single query by using operators like union, union all, intersect. Just finished chapter 16. Uh, it was a lot. Uh, it was all about indexes and there was a lot of good information so I took good notes. So my notes say, uh, an index is a pointer to data in a table. An index is similar to the index in the back of a book. So for example, if you have a book, you want to look up all the information about a certain topic in the book, then it's easier to go to the index and then find all the pages that contain information about the topic instead of flipping through the whole book and then finding it page by page. But this works only if the book is big enough to justify flipping back and forth between the index and the main pages. If it's a smaller book, then it's faster to just flip through the pages to find the information. So when an index is created, 
uh, on the database column every time the original table is updated the index table is updated as well and when a query is executed against the database uh, and a condition specified in the where clause is the column that is indexed then the database server looks up the index table first finds the right location and then goes to the database to get the information and this process is way faster than doing a full table scan and then trying to find the relevant information in the whole table. The important thing to note here is that indexes do take a physical storage space and sometimes the index table can get bigger than the original table. So you have to use indexes very carefully. So you should use indexes on columns for primary keys, for foreign keys, for uh, columns that are frequently used to join tables and columns that are frequently used as conditions of a query. The, those were good pointers on when to use indexes. And then the scenario for avoiding indexes is when you have a smaller table. So I finished chapter 17. Chapter 17 was all about database performance. And I learned that database tuning is different from SQL tuning. So database tuning is tuning of the uh, actual database. It includes things like optimizing uh, the CPU and IO and memory allocation and disk usage and also the database design and indexes and things like that. Uh, whereas SQL tuning is tuning of the SQL statements or like queries and transactional statements. SQL tuning leverages database tuning. So that was an interesting distinction. Then I also learned about things like the most restrictive condition, which means that you have to optimize the where clause such that it will return the least amount of rows just to speed up performance. And then I also learned about things like you should avoid uh, the or operator or you should use the like operator and you should avoid uh, large sort operations and you should disable indexes for batch loads. Uh, this chapter went by very quickly. Uh, I am feeling a little cabin feverish now uh, because I haven't gone outside all day uh, and it's a beautiful day outside uh, so I think I'm going to take a break, take a walk, go to my favorite cafe and then get some reading done. I'm back home now, I had a very nice walk, uh, I went to the cafe, got a coffee and a pie that I'm very excited to eat after this experiment to reward myself uh, and I also read chapter 18 and 19 so chapter 18 discussed user management and it talked about why we need user management and the three tasks are creating user accounts uh, and giving them passwords uh, then the second was to grant them privileges and the third was to remove user accounts from the database that no longer need access to it like revoking the privileges so that was like kind of the gist of chapter 18 and then chapter 19 talked about privileges in more detail. So chapter 19 talked about privileges as authority levels that let users uh, access database objects, manipulate database objects and perform administrative functions within the database and you give people access or like give people privileges using the grant statement and then you take away privileges from people using the revoke statement. Then the chapter talked about system privileges and object privileges. System privileges are the important top level privileges that allow users to create other users, to create tables, to alter the state of the database. Uh, then the object level privileges are like privileges for each database object. So, so users with object level privileges can only interact with specific and restricted objects within the database. The chapter also talked about the public user account, which represents all the users in a database. Uh, so if you give a privilege to the public account, then all the users of the database get that privilege. So it is very important to be careful about what privileges you're granting to the public account. And then uh, finally the chapter talked about roles. So roles is like grouping of users um, and then assigning them privileges as a group. Uh, and that helps in user management because you don't have to give and manage privileges for each individual user. You can do it at a group level as a role. And it again talked about how we need to be careful uh, and make sure that every user in a particular role needs all the privileges of the role, otherwise it can lead to security implications. I was running a little behind schedule, so I speed read 
read chapters 20 and 21. Chapter 20 uh, discussed views. A view is a virtual table that acts like a table and looks like a table, but is not a real table because it doesn't take up actual physical storage space. A view can have all the data in a table or selected data from a table and you can make views from one or more tables. So just a good security practice of creating views if you want to give read-only access to certain parts of the data to certain users. And then chapter 21 discussed system catalog, which is a database within a database. And it's super meta uh, of like uh, the system catalog is a database that the database server creates whenever you create a database and it contains all the meta information about the actual database so it has information about the users and the privileges and the user sessions and uh, the tables within the database and the indexes within the database and the performance stats so and usually you can only query a system catalog and you're not supposed to actually edit any of the data within the system catalog um so that's what i learned in chapters 20 and 21 and i have three more chapters to go i'm so over this experiment right now um but I'm going to power through. I'm so close to the finish line. Uh, but I don't think I'm going to vlog anymore. Um, so I'll update you tomorrow morning. It's 9.29. And we are done. It's been a couple weeks since uh, the last clip that you saw. I did not get time to record an outro clip for this vlog the next day. Uh, because I had friends in town. It was a long weekend. We went out to lunch. We played some D&D. But that worked out well. Because now I have had some time to reflect on that experiment. And I can give you more nuanced thoughts about it. And overall, I think the experiment was successful. It did what I hoped it would do for me. Which is, I know more SQL now than I did before the experiment. I definitely would recommend the book to an absolute newbie in SQL or those who know SQL but want a refresher. I think that's a really good book for them. And I really liked the 24 hour format because there was like an end in sight that you could walk towards. And I don't know if this came across in the vlog, but I wasn't continuously studying. Like I wasn't studying for 12 hours at a time because each of the chapters were pretty self-contained and small so i spent like 25 to 40 minutes per chapter and then i had time in between to do other things before i had to move on to the next chapter a couple chapters did take the whole hour uh, and that got like a little too draining but most of the chapters were pretty manageable uh, that i could study them do the exercises and then go do something else take a break and then come back to it the next hour so i think the pacing of the book is really really good Again, I don't think the book intends to make you a SQL expert, but it's definitely a good introduction to SQL. I identified some knowledge gaps that I had in my SQL knowledge uh, that I can now deep dive into and learn more about. I really liked that each chapter had an exercise and quizzes related to it, uh, which helped solidify the things that I was learning. Talking about the cons of the book, the sample database was frustrating. So if you're using CockroachDB, just use the CockroachDB resources and sample databases we have. And again, as I said, it's not meant to be uh, the ultimate resource for SQL. So like set realistic expectations for the book. But other than that, I think this was a fun experiment. I think it was a very productive weekend. I got some studying done. I had fun with my friends. So overall, I'm pretty happy with my long weekend. And if you found this to be fun or helpful, like, share, subscribe, you know the drill. And thank you for watching.